Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you a lot of different things on how to understand the blending modes in the pattern section. Multiply, subtract, how to add tags, remove tags, import patterns and do whatever you want with the textures. You are going to learn a lot. Are you ready? Here we go. And where are my patterns located in my hard drive? If I go to the settings, Go to manage resources, then open resource folder, and you can see that you can select here the patterns, and you have all the patterns that you have loaded. And this path is related with the path that you have selected here in the configure Krita, just general resources section. For me, it's available at this path, but you can change whatever you want. If you want to add more textures to Krita, you just go to the settings, go to manage resources, and go to import resources. Then select the files, OK. And Krita asks you, what do you want to do with these files? I'm going to use as patterns, so click here, OK, and close. Now I can go to whatever brush, and as the textures are loaded, I can look for or M in this case, and I find my new patterns already loaded. Activate the texture, and you see that you have another pattern active to add more creative effects to your artworks. I love patterns, and it's a lot of fun, really. Check it out. If you want to add more tags, to a lot of different patterns, you can go to the settings, minus resources, and change the brush presets for patterns. And I select this, I can make a square, click and drag, and select these ones, press control, and I select one by one, and I can press here with the shift key, and I'm selecting this range, is selecting this and this, and if you think that you are missing something, you can complete with control. And that, that way you have selected a lot of different patterns. So now you can go to the tags and add the marble or create a new one. In this case, I'm going to call them Teetered because are used for the Teetered effects in gradients. And click OK. And now they have all these patterns have the teetered tag and it's really easy. So if you miss something, you just have only select this and this and go to the tags and select teetered and done. And if I go to my pattern here and I'm looking for the teetered brushes, I can go here and go to teetered and I have all my teetered brushes here. If you want to remove a tag, just imagine this is not uh, useful for teetering anymore. So I love this teetering, but uh, I'm going to remove from this tag. And now it doesn't have the teeter tag. And I can do again, if I go to the settings, minus resources, and look for patterns in the tag sections. I look for teeter and I select this or press shift and select a lot of them and I just remove the teetered, so they are removed easy. OK, let's go with the brushes. I have modified this a bit just to show you the effect better. Because now we have selected this pattern right here. We activate the texture with this option here, the pattern. OK, I'm going to remove this strength, be sure that we are not using flow or opacity. This can affect very much the final effect. Right now we are not using the strength and you can see that the pattern, we have a lot of different patterns. Right now we are going to use the default ones. Okay, so I go here and you can see that I have a lot of blending modes. So we will cover this in a minute. But first of all, we have the size and you can see it's related with the slider that we previously placed in the UI. If you missed that part, you have the video in the description or in the card section. And now we have the brightness. 
and the brightness effect, the pattern, the texture effect. It's like editing the photograph. We are increasing the brightness. You can see that as it's multiplying, we are reducing the visual effect. Decrease, we go to the maximum strength. But we left this as it is. And the contrast, increase the contrast or decrease the contrast. You can see the preview is very useful. And the neutral point is really good when you want to make fine tuning of your brushes or fix uh, a bad setting in a brush tip imported or created or default that you want to modify for your own purposes. And as you can see the cutoff policy, there is an article from David Rebois which helps a lot to create this. Uh, so you can control the cutoff of the brush and the pattern. I normally use this as disable, so I will leave this for this process. But remember, you have all these available. Let me know in the comments. I will look for practical uses of this. By default, the random offset is deactivated. So I'm going to deactivate so now we are going to activate the strength and you see how this has changed a bit because we're using the pressure. If we control these, you can see how it affects that we are losing the texture because we are losing the visible part of the stroke. Okay. So if I make a brush stroke, you can see that we have a very subtle effect in multiply. We have this, but we can just go here and decrease the contrast and you will see the difference. Also, we can invert the, the texture. Okay, so if I invert the pattern, you can see that the strokes will be different. If I make long stroke, you can see how this is white and this is the darkest tone. So if I go here and invert, you can see how is the inverse behavior. You can see how this is darkest and this is white. Now I'm painting one brush stroke, another brush stroke, and another. It's like filling a surface with the same texture. But if I change this to the random, a totally different behavior because I make a brush stroke and I make another brush stroke and this is overlapping the previously made brush stroke. You can see I can get the opaque behavior. I'm gonna show you with another texture really fast and you see how this overlaps, okay? You see the effect. And if I make with this, press zero, I get another brush stroke, brush stroke. You can see it's like a photograph, okay? So you choose the behavior and the same the next brush stroke will be the same, but if I activate the offset, the horizontal offset, you can see how it's moving and how it's moving in the vertical axis. So now it's not the same position for the texture. So it's just filling the area with the position. And now let me show you another blending mode. It's the subtract blending mode. And you can see the effect is totally different because now we have a more dramatic changes with the light pressure. You see the texture is rough texture, but it's great if we want to add some texture here. I can use the, the subtract mode to create a more rough effect. But of course, I can modify the contrast. I can in increase or decrease the brightness. I can move the neutral point and I get a more soft effect, a softer effect, okay? You see here. So you can play a lot with the parameters and create a lot of combinations with all these parameters here. One thing that I was missing is that you can change the scale here. If I select two, I'm multiplying and I can increase the size. If I multiply it by 10, I can go even a more incredible 
big size so chains like this i'm just using like splots but you see that we are losing the the detail of the texture you need to use more high res textures okay but normally we are not using this but a more uh just around this two one around these values and now let me show you one interesting thing because if i use the multiply you see the effect i can see the content behind and if i use the subtract it's the same but if i use the third one which is the lightness map you can see that i'm making opaque texture even when i'm using lowest values if you want to create uh, impressive text impressive texturing effect you can use this because we will overlap everything that is behind that is in your background and you can create really fast like pasting a photograph effect you can see how i'm creating the effect in real time oh it's a very special effect the next blending mode that we have in Krita is the gradient map so we can use the gradient colors to control the colors in the stroke so you can see i can create something like this but how can i control these colors the orange or blue or whatever gradient i have here if i go to the brush editor now i can control the brightness and you see how orange is getting more and more affected in the brush stroke and if i use the contrast you can see how intensify the effect but it's not affecting the colors the blue colors so it's more restricted so we are only affecting the contrast and if i start to play with this and reduce the contrast the neutral point you can see that i can generate a lot of different types of effects with the, with this gradient the next blending mode is related with teleasset edges so you can create super contrast strokes i selected explicitly this texture which has a lot of grays inside you can play with black and white so i think this blending mode is perfect for inking purposes and higher range of dpi for real printing you can test it and you can play with the strength here and you can increase to even go to control and see only a part of the texture i need to increase this to right to full black but if you don't want so much contrasted edges alias effect you can use the hard mix softer and then everything changes as you can see i have again grays this is the soft version of the previous one now let's go with the height blending mode and it's the default values so you can see the effect something like this and how fast we go from very contrasted texture to a full opaque range i prefer to reduce this this value the strength I reduce this to around 40 30 it depends on the brush around here you can see it's very stream very textured effect to a very flat color and Krita has include this another blending mode that is the linear height that softens that effect but again is super strong so we need to reduce the values or even decrease this more and let's see what we have now you can see we have more grays and now we go from grayscale to flat color and let's see if it's my point yeah i think it is of course there are more blending modes available in Krita, but if you want to go deeper you have a very good documentation that can help you to understand better what this is useful for and also 
don't be restricted to the normal use you can combine with another brushes and create impressive effects now that you understand better the use of patterns in Krita, maybe it could be the perfect moment to help us and donate to the Krita team that way Krita will be supporting your career as artist and as usual don't forget that you have other videos about digital painting in the channel so see you there